Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2013. We're going to be taking a look at Neil Zaza and he's going to be performing I'm Alright. So let's get Neil up on screen and see how he gets on. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in here because top of the bill about this composition and the performance is melody. It's one of those things that gets overlooked all the time, especially with players of a high technical ability, of which Neil certainly is, but he's got that appreciation of composition and melody and journey. And getting into this particular performance, there's so much in there. First of all, the thing that hits you between the eyes straight off the bat is the tone, because Neil's tone is so thick. We've got reverb on there, we've got delay as well. And there's quite a lot of kickback to that delay in terms of the feedback. We've got two, three, four repeats of the first line that might be played, and that just sits in the background and complements the next line that Neil will be playing. Whilst watching this performance as well, you might hear parts of other players in there. Certainly for me, Joe Satriani pops out and Summer Song in order to get something that is very much major based in terms of the progression and the composition, but then just throwing it over to that minor pentatonic with the lead playing, but that minor progression for maybe 10 or 15 seconds, and then coming back to the major progression again. And it's all about building that journey. When you compose a purely instrumental piece, and you've just got a lead instrument at the front of the stage, you're already at a disadvantage because people are used to hearing a vocalist and hearing lyrical content that they might connect with in terms of the story that is being told by that particular vocalist. But here, if you imagine the lead guitar is like a singer, but they're only making one noise and they're never saying any words. So the melody has got to be so interesting and you've got to go to so many different places musically in order to make a journey out of it and to make it interesting on the whole. Neil is giving you a great example of how to do it because we're starting in that major key, then turning over to minor keys. It's going to be a positive sound because of the major bass chord progression. But then as soon as you change to minor, it's going to put a question in there. And that's what music is all about, asking the audience questions. So that's what we've got with Neil throughout this whole performance, mostly major bass. But as soon as that mood changes, it's more dramatic because we've been so long in that major key and also throwing in guitar techniques and a lot of them in order to get one note to sound different each time you might play it. So it's not just a monotone voice of the guitar. We've sometimes got vibrato on there. We've sometimes 
sometimes got a pinched harmonic. Pinched harmonics are so easy to overdo as a technique when you're playing guitar, especially when you've got a heavy tone, but it's all about throwing them in there tastefully. And you'll find that the top players often move from technique to technique and never linger on one particular technique, unless that is part of their trademark and that's what they're known for doing, they will spread it around in order to keep the performance interesting, but also for the overall sound of the composition, you need to be able to go from one place to the next, have light and shade throughout the whole composition to keep it interesting the whole time. You'll find that the top melodic players approach writing in a very similar way because they are using their guitar as the voice, as the vocal for the song, which means that they're gonna have a chorus in there. They're gonna have a particular melody line, a hook that is going to be prevalent throughout the whole composition that they keep going back to. And they will not only keep going back to that particular hook, but they will do different versions of that same chorus line, that same hook throughout the composition. And we've got that straight away here with Neil. We're immediately into this hook line that we've got that then pops up throughout the composition. And the way that Neil throws it together, it's very much like playing an elongated riff. Obviously, it's a really technical riff in terms of string skipping, making sure your pick's going in the right direction the whole time, but it is just a long riff, and look out for when Neil is hammering those root notes at the start of every chord change. So he's playing the first note of each chord with those chord changes, but then he's arpeggiating the chord with his lead work. And he's not just playing top to bottom arpeggios here. He's jumping from one part of the chord to the next, really making an interesting journey out of the chord that he's playing over the top of. And because he's moving with the chords, it's gonna make it sound so much more interesting than just sticking with your root chord and playing in pentatonic shape one, and just hammering that for the whole performance, he's moving all over the place with the chords. Neil was inspired by Van Halen. He was a big fan of Van Halen's music, but playing classical guitar, he just wanted to rock out. So I think he made that transition from classical then into rock. But I have seen an interview with him and he's mentioned about playing classical music it is a case of sitting down, maybe doing eight hours a day of learning one particular piece and just repeating it over and over and over and over. So it gave him that discipline in order to sit down and play something for eight hours over and over again is a great way to train yourself in order to get down really technical passages when you move to electric guitar and you might wanna do sweet picking, you might want to do alternate picking runs, you've then got that patience already because you've been through it with classical music to then sit down and get down these runs with a pick. In the interview that I saw on the Sweetwater channel, Neil said that with those classical pieces, it is use it or lose it. So you just learn one piece and it is the case that if you don't play it, you then can't just pick it up and play it again. You have to go through the repetition over and over and over again. Of course, some of the muscle memory is residual. It will still be there, but in order to get it all up to speed and go through the whole process again, he just followed that more hard rock route. As we can see with the playing, he was inspired by Neil Sean, another guy that is on the channel here somewhere, but such a melodic player himself. It is following the melody, but also dotting in the technique and the faster sections for the feel of the composition to take it to another place. So many players make the mistake of thinking that composing a musical piece is three or four minutes of opportunity to show off how much sweet picking you've been working at and how many arpeggios you can throw together. It is always the case top players are so appreciative of melody and that's why they connect with an audience because people can sing it back. There's a hook in there that they can get a hold of and something that will stick in their head. You cannot hum sweet picked arpeggios. It's impossible unless they are very slow, but once you start speeding stuff up, that is not repeatable, it means that you start to lose the connection with the audience listening 
unless you just do it in very small amounts. And that is the key, that it can be used to give you something different emotionally, to get a different reaction from your audience. You can still be a really fast, technically gifted player that plays melodically. There have been loads of top guitarists that do that. You've got Neil as a great example here. We've got Satriani, you've got Steve Vai in there as well. Sean Lane as well. There's a guy who was super fast, but you felt like he was always playing in second or third gear and he had seven gears if he wanted them. That is the point, that the technique is something you can go to emotionally to get a different reaction, to throw something different at your audience. Nobody has ever said, oh, listen to that beautiful bird song that you can hear in the distance. The bird has never been shredding for three or four minutes, just consistently throwing notes at you, maybe 10, 15 notes a second for a long period of time. You can start to imagine in your head how annoying that would be if a bird was constantly changing notes 10 to 15 times a second over and over and over and over for minutes on end. The most important thing about listening to a beautiful bird song is what it doesn't sing. There is a call and then the bird waits for the response. And that's what we like about it because you're given time to appreciate what you just heard. And you're never given that time if there are notes that are consistently hitting you all the time. So I think it is something intrinsic within us that goes all the way back to nature and having that need to have space for a response. But not only that, but musically, as a whole, to leave space in your compositions for the audience to be able to digest and understand what you're saying musically. This is a great insight into politicians and why so many people don't get on with them is because once they've got an agenda, they will keep on talking at you for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, and there's no response. It's all one way. As soon as you get a conversation that is one way, it becomes quite uninteresting and if anything it can annoy the people that are listening to it. When I mention as well about changing the speed of the playing to alter the mood of the performance, to give an example I don't think I've ever seen anybody spontaneously burst into tears listening to really fast playing for three or four minutes and just shredding. It's that mood change that sometimes happens with great guitarists who play melodically and slowly with great vibrato and expression, they can get an emotional response to that end in order to make people feel emotional and cry. And the opposite end of that spectrum is speed, playing fast, very technical runs on guitar, and being able to mix that up, you can start to see how you've now got two totally different ends of the spectrum between slow melodic playing and very fast playing, but if you're always jumping from one to the other, that's where you mix up the emotions and it's always going to be an interesting journey. But let's get back into the performance.
And there we have it. So with this particular video, it's been requested that I look at Just I'm All Right. There's also the American National Anthem that Neil then goes into. I'm gonna leave the link to this in the description below so you guys can check out the whole video if you want to and check out this last anthem that's gonna be played. It just so happens tonight as well. I don't want this video to go on for too long because we've addressed so many things about this performance already, but another thing that I do want to point out in relation to the tone that Neil has got is how little it changes throughout the performance because sometimes you'll find within a composition the guitarist really roll off a lot of that volume, go to a clean sound, maybe throw in a little bit of lead of that nature. But here we're pretty much overdriven for the whole thing and there's a little bit of change in there but it's not dramatic which means that the focus is purely on melody and journey because we're not getting the journey from the sound of the guitar in terms of tonally but we're getting the journey from what's being played melodically and this is the point as well that you could argue with this particular composition the speed is great to see, great to hear, but I think the composition was so strong melodically, you could just play through that section slightly faster and it wasn't really required. It wasn't really calling out for so much speed, which is just testament to the original composition, but also the appreciation of melody that Neil has throughout the composition that he could easily have gone to another melodic line in that section that was slightly faster, but not as fast as he was playing. And it still would have been great. Obviously, like I said, the guitarists will also get something out of this, especially looking at the technique that is involved with those faster passages. But melodically, I think this just sells itself. Just before we finish, I have to mention the technique that everybody's waiting to hear, which is vibrato and the control that Neil has, not only on frets, but also at the top of bends, keeping it consistent throughout in order to get that guitar to sing. It's one of those techniques that all the top guitarists have and the top technically gifted guitarists who appreciate melody on a deep level all have that control of vibrato to match the mood of the composition. We've got that throughout from Neil. Sometimes there are players that are technically gifted and they've spent so long on the technical aspects of playing that they might play an amazing run going up the fretboard but then when they end on that last note, you've got to make that guitar sing. It's got to have a voice. And if your vibrato sounds out of control, the whole run that you've played up until that point has now been cancelled because everyone wants to hear a great ending. Imagine somebody singing a great note and then at the end they go... <sighs> like that, it's gonna ruin everything. You don't hear the previous note now without that ending. Everyone will laugh because it was such a stupid ending, no matter how good it was beforehand. And that is vibrato in a nutshell. You can put together the most amazing run, but then if you end on something that sounds awful, it doesn't matter how good it was up to that point. So feel free to load up this video. The link's gonna be in the description below in order to hear Neil's version of the American National Anthem, which he's about to get into. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.